Hey, team, my name is Caleb Lyle Kunze, and I, uh, we love that you are here with us this morning. I have the immense privilege and honor to work with our students here um, on Wednesday nights, our 5th through 12th graders. Truly the greatest job on the planet, getting to hang out with our students. God is doing some amazing, amazing things. For all of those of you in the building, it is awesome to see your wonderful, beautiful, shining faces. For those of you joining us online, it's awesome to have you here at all through technology, uh, a huge blessing, and a special welcome to any of our first-time guests or visitors. We love getting to do life and walking this journey of life with Jesus with you. Um, and then an extra, extra special happy Mother's Day to all of you moms out there. Um, you, we... We wouldn't be here without you. Um, so thank you, moms, for all of the sacrifice and love and support and encouragement that you do. Uh, Mom, if you're watching, a special thank you to you. Love you a bunch. And this is kind of a special Mother's Day because this is the first Mother's Day that my wife, Carissa, is a mom. So something new in our family. So you are already an amazing mom and will be in the future. Uh, we are excited this morning. We, uh, just to mention again, the congregational meeting next week right after service. We'd love, if you're a member here joining us, we're going to be voting on um, budget and new leadership council nominations, some bylaw changes. We'd really appreciate getting to do this with you. We are a body of Christ. We are a body together, and we'd love to have you join us for that. And then the other thing that I wanted to just mention is coming up, put it on your calendars, August 11th and 12th. It's this thing called Celebrate Minnesota. It's this community-wide event, if you haven't heard about it, where they focus on connecting, serving, and impacting our local community all for the glory and honor of God. So put it on your calendar, and if you want to learn more about it, you can go to celebratemn.org to find out more. And if you're thinking, wow, why are we talking about something coming up in August? That seems like a far way away. It's really not. Summer is here, and that's why we're starting this new message series on habits. But before we get to that, could you please pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love. Thank you, God, for, for this morning. Thank you for our moms and the love and support that they have. We thank you for this time and this place, and we surrender it to you, God. We ask that you be with us this morning. We ask that your Holy Spirit works in our hearts to come awake in us, to be revived in us, dear Heavenly Father, that we can experience you, Jesus, in a new and a fresh way this morning. We love you so much. And all God's people said, amen. This new series on habits Focusing on habits. It's a three-week series, and it's hopefully going to be really tangible and applicable so that when you leave here on Sunday mornings for the next couple weeks, you have something, an actionable item that you can do. That's the goal. We realize that over summer, our routine gets completely blown up and destroyed, right? We get students, kids, you're not in school, so you're at home more, which just throws a unique dynamic into families. There's a lot of vacations that take place, and you're gone, and, and life just looks a little bit different. There's summer sports leagues. There's, there's adult leagues for adults, right? If you're maybe in a volleyball league or a softball league or kids, right? There's just so many things that are different. Cabin season is upon us. People disappear over the summer sometimes. Our normal habit of showing up to church maybe consistently looks a little bit different in summer. And this series is to hopefully challenge us to not become lax in continually growing. And I mean that spiritually. I mean that physically. I mean that mentally and emotionally. We want to continue to grow. And here at Love of Christ, we desire to walk with you in this journey of life. And a lot of the things that I'm going to be sharing this morning are not of my own creation. Um, I've stolen them from a couple different areas. The first one is Craig Groeschel's Leadership Podcast. If you want to learn more about leadership, I encourage you to go and listen to this. Um, this book in the middle, Chop Wood, Water, uh, it was given to me by my older brother, and it's about leadership. The 
chapters are like two pages long, so it's totally my kind of book. Um, And it's all about doing the simple things consistently will change your life over the long term. And then Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, Darren, in a message a couple weeks ago, actually mentioned two of them, the ones on the outside. Um, And for him and also for myself, these have been really life-changing things. So if you're like, man, I really am ready for that next book and I'm just figuring out what I should read next, read one of the books. If you're a podcast listener, check out this leadership podcast. And in his book, James Clear and Atomic Habits, says this amazing thing. We don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. We don't rise to the level of our goals. We actually fall to the levels of our systems. What does he mean by that? At the beginning of every sports season, every team has the same goal. We want to win the championship. We want to win the Super Bowl. We want to win the World Series, whatever it might be. And yet, only one team wins. We all have the same goals of wanting to be financially stable in life. We want to be millionaires, and yet not all of us are millionaires. We all have the same physical goals, maybe. We want to have shredded six-pack abs like Caleb, but y'all can't get what you want always, right? We have the same goals, but our systems don't always get us to those goals. We want to get promotions in our jobs, and yet we don't always receive them. We fall to the level of our system. So you might ask, well, how do we create systems to help us be successful? And this is where we're going to be at. These three words all morning long. Hopefully you're going to be sick of hearing them by the end. Who before do? Who before do? Say it with me. Who before do? We want to focus on our identity because our identity shapes our actions. It shapes what we do. If we focus on who we want to become, it shapes what we do in living into that couple personal examples in Caleb's life. I wanted to be someone, or I want to be someone, who is wise. That's a goal. That's an identity that I want to have as someone who, someone who is wise. So what have I been doing? I've been reading more. I've been listening to more podcasts to learn more and become more wise. I also want to be someone who is disciplined and organized, So something simple that I've been doing is every morning when we wake up, we try and make our bed as a simple task to say, hey, we're going to be disciplined today. Every night before bed, I floss my teeth. I would always brush my teeth. And whenever I'd go to the dentist, you know how the dentist would be like, as they're flossing your teeth, they'd be like, hey, Caleb, when was the last time you flossed? And I'd be like, well, you should know you were there, right? I just wasn't, I didn't floss my teeth. This year... I think I've flossed my teeth every single night in 2023. It's a simple thing because of who I want to become, a disciplined person, my actions then follow suit. I want to be closer to Jesus, so I've been daily reading my Bible in the Bible in a Year Challenge that we put out in the beginning of the year. I want to be an author and a writer someday, so lately I've been every night before bed, I journal like two to three sentences. Simple actions live into the identity, the who I want to become. Who before do. We see this in Paul, the author of much of the New Testament. Paul used to be known as Saul. He would go around persecuting Christians, actually, and he would even kill them. And then he encounters Jesus in this crazy story on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9. And he comes to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And it says this. I don't really understand myself, he says in Romans chapter 7, verse 15. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Skipping ahead to verse 18. And I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyways. Paul is facing an identity crisis. He's saying, these are the things that I want to do, but I'm just not doing them. 
And these are the things that I really don't want to do, I shouldn't be doing, and those are the things that I'm doing. He's found himself in this predicament. He goes on to say this. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Paul attaches his identity to the things that he's doing. I don't do the things I want. I do the things I don't want to do. And this is my identity. I'm a miserable sinner. But he goes on in the very next verse. Who will free me from this? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. See, Paul moves his identity from the things that he does. He moves his identity to the one who gives him his identity. Paul shifts his understanding of who he is to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus, and a good news proclaimer. And because of that identity of who he now is, his actions and his purpose looked different. Once Paul knew he was, he was then able to do the things in order to live into that identity. In Acts chapter 17, in the Good News translation, it says this, according to his usual habit, Paul went to the synagogue. There, during three Sabbaths, he held discussions with the people, quoting and explaining the scriptures and proving from them that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from death. This Jesus whom I announced to you, Paul said, is the Messiah. So because of his identity as a disciple, because of his identity as a follower of Jesus, as a good news proclaimer, Paul's purpose shifted, which then changed his actions. Paul created a habit of going to the synagogue, going to the church, and proclaiming the good news of Jesus. He consistently would go because it was a habit that he had formed. And God used that habit, and the Holy Spirit worked in people's lives. You see, sometimes we get in this mindset of the little things, the little things don't really matter. (laughs) We get this false idea that the small things don't really matter. You see, we start to do good habits, and we do them for a little while, but we don't see any immediate reward. So we say, well, it must not really matter. Some examples, well, we, we go for a run, two-mile run, three times in one week. You step on the scale at the end of the week, and you gain two pounds, and you're like, what? You're like, well, I'm not going to go through that torture if I'm just going to gain weight, so we stop working out. We go through things like we go on a date every single week with our spouse. We're intentional, and at the end of the month, we have this massive argument, and we say, oh, those dates must not have done any good. And we stop doing the good habits. We study for an hour every single day for a big test coming up. And we still get a subpar grade and we think, oh man, studying must not be all that important. We read our Bible daily for a month and yet we don't really feel any closer to God. So the little things must not really matter. And on the flip side of that same coin, we do some really bad habits that don't have any like major life bad things that happen in the moment. So we think, oh, the little things must not really matter. So we keep doing the bad habits. We eat a donut for breakfast three days in a row, become morbidly obese. We play video games for four hours every single night, and yet we still can pass school. You make a couple bad hires at your company, but your company doesn't go belly up. You neglect your kids because your work schedule is just so crazy for a couple month period, and your kids don't get angry and move out of the house. We skip reading our Bible for a month, and we don't forget the story of who Jesus is and what he did for us. We stop attending church regularly for a couple months, and we don't fall away from our faith. So we are led to the misconception that the little things don't matter, both the good or the bad. And this is very far from 
the truth. I want you to picture a, a pot of water that's sitting on the stove. You turn the water to high, or the, the water to high. You turn the stove to high, and it starts to heat up the water, right? It starts off as room temperature, and then it heats up to 83 degrees, and then 91 degrees, and then 178 degrees, and then 203 degrees, and 210, 211 degrees. And when you have 211 degree water, what do you have? Really hot water, right? Like really, really hot water. But it goes to 212 degrees. Now what do you have? You got boiling water. One small degree difference And all of a sudden, now the water goes from really, really hot to now it's boiling. And this happens so often in people's lives. We sometimes see this as an overnight success story. We see someone doing something, and all of a sudden, they write a number one best-selling book. They start a business, and it's all of a sudden just off the charts doing super well. We see a, a Jesus follower who's just on fire, passionate for the Lord, And we think, oh, that just, it just happened. (laughs) But we didn't see the hours and the days and the weeks, the months, the years, the blood, the sweat, and the tears that have gone into creating a habit. You see, the heat as that water was warming up was stored up. It was being stored up. The energy was being stored up until all of a sudden, bam, It's boiling. And this happens in other areas of life where people are consistently doing something. They're working on something. They're beating on their craft. They're working hard at it. Until it hits that tipping point. Habits. Who before do? In that story in Acts chapter 17, Paul according to his usual habit, went to the synagogue. He taught about Jesus. He proclaimed the good news of Jesus. And then the very next verse, Acts chapter 17, verse 4, says this, Some of them were convinced and joined Paul and Silas. And so did many of the large women and leading group. Oh, sorry, excuse me. So did many of the leading women and the large group of Greeks who worshiped God. You see, Paul, Paul, was consistent. He had a habit. And the Holy Spirit was working through Paul's habit of consistently going to the synagogue. I would assume that Paul started to create some relationships with some of the people that he saw regularly. The Holy Spirit worked through that. It wasn't an overnight success story. God was blessing and working through his habits. Paul says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, let us not become weary in doing good. He says, keep on going, keep on pursuing, keep on persevering. Don't stop doing the good things. Last week, Pastor Steve's message was all about perseverance. If you didn't get the chance to listen to it, go back and listen to it. Persevere. Perseverance produces character and character hope, and hope doesn't disappoint. Who before do? Who do you want to become? What identity do you want to have? Because our identity shapes our actions. I want to boil this all down to this one point, no pun intended. But this summer, you want to become. When summer is here, And summer is gone, and we get to September. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be a millionaire? You might want to start saving some money. (laughs) Do you want to be an author? You might want to start writing every single day. Do you want to be someone who's fit and is an athlete? Do you want to be someone who's clean and organized? A loving boss who puts others first? A loving husband who cares for his wife, a sacrificial wife who who loves and supports her husband, a respectful child. 
Who do you want to become this summer? Maybe you want to be a God-fearing follower of Jesus. A Jesus freak. Maybe you want to be Jesus' hands and feet in this community. Maybe you want to be someone who's on fire, passionate, disciple of Jesus. Who do you want to be this summer? Who before do? I want to pause at this point and say this. If you're shooting for anything other than Jesus, you're aiming too low. You see, I believe that there's some people in this room right now that are thinking, man, I really want to be a millionaire. That would be awesome. Man, I really want to be number one best-selling author. Man, I really want to be physically fit. I really want to be this. I really want to be that. But if you're aiming for anything other than Jesus, you're shooting too low. As Paul says, our identity is in Jesus. Some of us in this room, some of us watching online right now, are placing our identity in our wealth. Some of us in this room are placing our identity in our success here on earth. Some of us here in this room are placing our identity in some addictions and sinful pleasures of this world. Some of us in this room are placing our identity in our past failures and mistakes and you see yourself as less than. Some of us in this room place our identity in our personal fame and glory. If you're aiming for anything other than Jesus, you're aiming too low. Paul says in Romans 7, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank you, God. The answer is in Jesus, our Lord. So this morning, if you are feeling as though you're in identity crisis, if you feel as though you are far from God because of your past, if you're feeling weighed down by the weight of your shame and your guilt, if you're caught up in a sin, if you're pursuing after something other than Jesus, if you're far from God, feeling as though God will never be able to love and forgive you for the things that you have done, I want you to know that the answer is Jesus. He is the one who gives us our identity. He is the one who loves you so much that he was willing to step down from perfection of heaven. He was the one willing to step into this world to become flesh, to become a part of his creation, to live a perfect life without sin to take on your sin, my sin, the wrongs that we have done upon himself. He took it to the cross and he nailed it there. And then he took that sin to the grave with him and he laid there dead for three days. And this Jesus then rose from the dead three days later, conquering sin, death, hell, and the devil so that you and I could have a new identity as sons and daughters, princes and princesses of the one true king, who before do. Jesus is the answer. If you're wrestling, if you're struggling this morning, Jesus calls us to confess our sin. Jesus calls us to repent from the wrongs that we have done. What is repentance? Repentance is a 180 degree shift. So if you're going this way, doing something, focusing on something other than Jesus, repentance is turning from and pursuing after Jesus. If you're struggling this morning, if you're going through some challenges Let's repent, let's confess, let's speak out the things that we're wrestling with. Let's do that right now as we confess. Dear Jesus, we come before you as broken people. Every single person in this room, every single person watching online, including myself, God, are broken. 
We have identity problems. We try and place our identity in all the wrong places, God. We aim too low. Jesus, we want, we want to pursue after you, God. But there's sin in our life that keeps us separated from you, God. And we confess that. We, we confess that we have done things. We confess that we have said things, that we have thought things that are not God-pleasing. As Paul says, the things that we want to do, we don't do. And the things we don't want to do, those are the things that we do, Father. And we ask for your forgiveness, We ask for your forgiveness because of your sake, Jesus. Forgive us, renew us, cleanse us, make us new. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Who before do? The amazing thing is that God promises to hear our prayer and God promises to forgive. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, that we are new creations. The old has gone. The new has come. We have a new identity in Jesus. We are sinful people, but we have a new identity. We are forgiven. We have been redeemed. We have been bought back. We have been loved by the Father, the creator of all things. You have a new identity. The old has gone. The new has come. Who before do? Our identity is in Jesus. Followers of Jesus forgiven by Jesus. Who before do? I want to close with a challenge. And most of my messages, I usually close with some sort of a challenge. And usually they're, they're not anything too difficult or challenging or hard. But it's just kind of a next step. This morning's challenge, I want to just take a moment and pause and say, I, I challenge you to do this. I believe this is going to be really, really important for you to take some time today to think about and to do it. I want to get up in your grill and say, uh, you need to take some time. You need to make this a priority because this is big stuff. This is important. And this is the challenge. I want you to create three I am statements, three identity statements of who you desire to be this summer. Who do you desire to become this summer? Three of them. Hear me. Don't just leave. I know it's Mother's Day. You might be going to lunch. That's awesome. But take some time. Take a couple minutes to think of and then write them down. Three I am statements of who you desire to become this summer. Maybe, maybe it's going to be something like this. I am a runner. That's the identity that you want to receive. I am a sacrificial neighbor, putting others' needs in front of my own. I am a respectful, on-time, hardworking employee. I am a faithful spouse. I am an honest business owner. I am a church attender. I am an in-the-word, prayerful Jesus follower. I am an example of someone being Jesus' hands and feet in this community. I am a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. I am an example of what it looks like to be abiding in Jesus. Three I am statements of who you desire to become this summer. And I've thought quite a bit about this for my personal life. Of who, who do I want to be when September gets here? Who does Caleb want to be? What do I want my identity to be? And I want to share the three with you so that you can help hold me accountable. The first one's pretty simple. The first one is this. I am an early riser. I'm an early riser. Getting my butt out of bed in the mornings is a really big challenge for me. It's hard. That snooze button is just oh too easy to hit. And I'm not saying an early riser. Some of y'all are crazy and you wake up at four in the morning. I'm not saying that, okay? 
I want to be up before seven o'clock. I want to be up early so that I can spend time with my wife before I go to work, so that I can spend time in the word, so that I can spend some time in prayer, starting my day off on the right foot before I go into work. I am an early riser. The second I am statement that I have is I am a prepared father who loves my child and my spouse big. I have a lot of great examples of what it looks like to be a father in my life. I'm very thankful for that. But I want to be prepared. I want to do some reading. I want to do some preparation. And I know that you can only do so much and it's just going to be a whirlwind when it happens. But I want to be intentionally preparing for when my child shows up in September. And I want to learn and talk to mentors of how do I love my wife and my child through all of it. And the third I am statement is I am an all-in, on-fire, passionate Jesus follower who brings joy to every situation. I want to be someone who's all-in for my Savior Jesus, who's passionate, who's on fire following Jesus, and because of that, bringing joy to every situation. Who am I at the end of summer? I am an early riser. I'm a prepared father who loves my spouse and my child big, and I am an all-in, on-fire, passionate Jesus follower who brings joy to every situation. Who do you want to become this summer? Take some time today. Spend some time in prayer of God. Who do you want me to become this summer? Who before due. I really believe that God's going to use this summer as a time of growth. I believe that God's going to use this summer as a time of pruning in our lives. I believe that God's going to use this summer to help you walk closer with him. And that's my prayer for you today is that as you leave this place, that God blesses you as you think about who your identity before what you do. You are forgiven, you are loved, you are a new creation. Dear Jesus, we thank and praise you for who you are, the God of all universe, the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the first, the last, Alpha and Omega. You are amazing. And because of who you are, God, a God of love, you are love because of who you are. It shaped your actions. It shaped the fact that you saw us scrambling. You saw us in our sin and you sent your son Jesus to die for us. And we thank you. Thank you for our new identity as sons and daughters in you, Jesus. We thank and praise you for who you have called us. We thank and praise you for who you give our names to as sons and daughters. And Lord, I ask that that shapes our purpose. I ask that that shapes our actions. Give us wisdom in who you are calling us to be this summer. We love you, Jesus. We thank you in your name. Amen.